Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will go one step further and show you how to calculate the phonon dispersion relationship of silicon crystal. And I have already pasted the reference here, uh, and uh, we will try to replicate this calculation, uh, and we will choose the same k path from gamma to x to k to gamma to l. And if you are not familiar with the high symmetry points like this, or uh, or you are not sure how to convert these uh, labels to actual coordinates, that you that you actually put in your calculation, you can refer to the uh, to my previous video about the band structure of silicon, uh, because uh, because the convention for the uh, electronic band structure is the same as the convention of the phonon dispersion that we use here. Uh, and in and in that video, I've shown you how to uh, convert uh, these labels to the actual coordinates uh, that you put in the input file. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, as you may already guess, the the calculation of the dispersion share some steps with the um, with the uh, calculation of the phonon density of state. So the first three steps are the same, and you first have to do a self consistency calculation to calculate basically the wave function of the system using p w dot x. And then the second step is to use ph dot x to cal calculate the q, q vector in the reciprocal space, the dynamical matrices, which will generate a series of files uh, starting with si dot dyn that we specify in the input file that we will see later. And the third step is to uh, calculate, like to convert the the uh, the dynamical matrices in the reciprocal space to the real space. So basically, it's a Fourier transform using q2r.x, uh, and um, it, it uses the si.dyn files from the last step, and it out outputs the si. Dot, uh, so so this file that we specify as uh, as an output. Okay, and then uh, we uh, so so in the tensor state calculation, we use the same uh, basically the same program here. Uh, but but it is um, but we do the calculation on a uniform a uniform grid of uh, q points because we want to get tensor of state, and here we uh, we need to specify the k path that we want to calculate the frequency on. Yeah, so so we change the input file a little bit, and and then. Um, it will output some files, and we can use the the, uh, the file as an input for the p, uh, plot band dot x to plot the actual dispersion relationship. Okay, so um, I will I will walk, walk you through the input file of the first three steps, um, and I will also show you how to run the code. But I will I will not actually run run it, but uh, and then we will we will run the uh, last two steps. Okay. So let's clear the screen. So the first thing to do, of course, is to source, and and then let's see the the first step. That's the self consistency calculation. Everything is should be quite familiar uh, with you, and um, and and the convergence threshold. I recommend that you lower the con convergence thres threshold to to have a better precision in this uh, phonon calculations. Yes. And uh, I already run the calculation. And the next step is to calculate the uh, dynamical matrices. And this is, as I said, this is the most time consuming part. And uh, this is basically the same same thing as as the last time. So if you are not familiar with it, uh, you can also refer to my video in the last time. But uh, just to remind you, the output there and uh, prefix um, this should be consistent with the with the self consistency calculation because it uh, in this calculation it needs to retrieve the wave function from the last step, and then this is the phonon uh, phonon convergence threshold, and uh, and this is this is low so it is precise, and this means that you specify a uniform grid of q points to do this uh, phonon calculation and this is atomic mass and and this is support important this is the output file that contains the dynamic dynamical matrices yeah 
And after the calculation, you will not only see the uh, standard output, but you will also see a series of uh, files starting from si.dyn here from 0 to 8. And uh, the number of the files depend depends on the Q point density that you choose in this input file. Yeah. So basically those uh, numbers here. Okay. Um, and then the third step is to do a Fourier transform from uh, from K space to uh, real space, and um, it, it uses those series of uh, of S Y uh, S I dot D Y N files as input. And uh, and output this single file called uh, si.k44.fc that we specify here, yeah. And and basically this is the output file of the third step. Yeah. So now we we have already done the th uh, first three steps, and let's run the fourth step. Okay, I will first uh, show you the input file of the fourth step. So it's more or less similar as before. It's just that we don't use a uniform grid of uh, Q points, but we uh, like specify the K points that uh, like the K path that we want to calculate. Yeah, and uh, so so this is the acoustic sum rule. Let's try simple, and this is the atomic mass. And uh, and this is important. You uh, this is the input file for this uh, dispersion calculation. So you need to have this file before you run the calculation. Um, and and then this is the output file that is uh, si dot uh, dot freak. It will output two files. Uh, one uh, like one si dot freak. One as si dot freak dot. Uh, I think is dot q uh, gp. Yeah. And and uh, the bank stru uh, structure is encoded in this uh, data file, and you can further use the plot band to plot this file. Okay, and uh, and then uh, th those are the specifications for the k points, and we have five uh, specific k points, and uh, and they are specified here. To find those coordinates, uh, you can. As I said before, you can refer to uh, my video on the um, band structure calculation of silicon because there I've already uh, uh, introduced you how to do this. So I will not uh, I will not uh, like explain it in detail again. And uh, and those two lines are very important. So this means that uh, that we don't have to specify all, every k point that we want to calculate. We just have to specify the uh, starting uh, like the starting point of the uh, k segment the end point of the k segment and how many points that we need um, on that line yeah if you if you leave this out or if you set it to like the default is false if you set it to be false or keep it as default you need to specify all of the points so so in principle if you want to calculate band structure you you need to uh, like specify a lot of points here yeah which is not convenient. Now, what it means is that we we have a gamma point and an x point, and we uh, let the program to automatically fill thirty points between gamma and x, 10, 10 points between x and k, twenty points between k and gamma, and thirty points between gamma and l. The last uh, last one is uh, is not important. Um, yeah, it's anyhow ignored, so you can set whatever number you have. So this is basically the same thing as the also as as in the band band structure calculation, and also this line is very important. It means that everything is written in the crystal coordinate, and um, and if you don't specify this, uh, you cannot express the uh, the the coordinates like like this. Yeah, okay. So so those two are very important. And uh, let's just run the calculation. Okay. So the calculation is like this: mm, is as usual, MPR run minus MP and two, and uh, the full path to this uh, to this program, and then and the input file, output file. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then and then sorry, I forgot to. Uh, to actually show you how to run the code, but basically it's the same same thing. MPI run and full path to this uh, to this uh, program, and then 
and then this line, and also mprm minus mp2, uh, full path to this ph2x, and also for this one. So yeah, so for those, um, I think you are quite familiar with. Okay, and then we run this uh, fourth step, and uh, you see that it's very quick, and it outputs the si.freak and si.freak.gp. So those two files are the files that contains the band structure. Um, but it is is not not yet uh, readable, and what we do, what we can do is that we use this uh, plot band dot x uh, calculation, and I already uh, I've already written the input file for the plot band dot x, and this is the same program as we used in the band structure calculation of silicon, and this is the input file. This is the uh, basically the uh, energy at uh, the starting point of the energy the end point of the energy so so the range of the y-axis and those are the two output files um, with different format and this is the fermi energy in this case there there's no fermi energy so we set it to be zero and this is the uh, spacing of the y level and uh, and this is the like the starting point or, or the zero energy point so we set it to be zero and to get this zero to uh, five hundred fifty, you can just take a look in the in the si dot freak dot gp, and and those are the uh, are basically the energies, yeah. From so basically it's from zero to five hundred, something like that. So we extend it a little bit from zero to five hundred fifty. Okay, and notice that the unit here is is not a electron volt. This is just uh, one over centimeter. Yeah. Okay, and then we just run this uh, calculation, and it is also very fast. It outputs the two uh, two joins here, and for the dot px, uh, ps you can directly open in Ubuntu, and let's rotate it. Okay, so this is the band structure that we calculated, and. Um, and it is from uh, let's open the dispersion. Okay, yeah. So it's indeed from uh, from gamma point here, x point here, k point here, gamma point here, and l point here. Yeah. Okay. And then we just uh, take a screenshot and paste it into the Excel to directly compare with the reference. Okay, maybe we need to make it smaller. Okay, yeah. So remember that the unit of the energy is one ov over a uh, centimeter, and here its uh, f frequency is tetrahertz. You can you can do the conversion, and it it should be should be the same, yeah. Um, but you already see that the uh, shape is the same, and um, and. So basically, we su successfully replicate the calculation here. Okay, so in this video, I've shown you how to calculate the phonon dispersion of silicon crystal, and I hope, you, hope that I help you. And um, I appreciate your like or uh, sub subscribe to my channel, and uh, I hope to see you next time.